In 2006, I made an episode of Time Team here with Tony Robinson at Warburton in Cheshire. Following on from filming the episode for the 2007 series that I decided to launch my own history channel. I launched it on a brand new channel known as YouTube. Well 14 years on the channel has grown immensely and it's thanks to the viewers and subscribers such as yourself that the channel has become so popular. With series such as History Walks and our new series Rambles Through History, the future is looking bright. Throughout 2021 and beyond, I'll be bringing you new history films and features. But today is a special day as we mark the anniversary of our 600th film here on TV Presenter for History. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for following my work and subscribing over the past 14 years and it's greatly appreciated. I hope that you'll join me again as we take our journey through 2021 and beyond. Anyway, it's time to sit back now and relax as I bring you a feature length film for our 600th episode here on TV Presenter for History. It was here in the year of 1846 when the south aisle of this church was being rebuilt that a Saxon stone cross came to light. Although this points to the possibility that religion was being practiced here in pre-conquest times, there's no documentation that shows who the church was dedicated to. Welcome to History Walks. Today, the church here in Swettenham, Cheshire is dedicated to St Peter. Swettenham is situated in the Dane Valley, just five miles away from nearby Congleton. Today, St Peter stands in an unusually shaped churchyard, but it's believed that there was once a Norman chapel here. It was in the early 1700s that the timber building of the late 13th century was declared as dangerous and well beyond repair. With little thought of the heritage of the building, the church was encased in brickwork in 1720. It was during the restoration of 1720 that it was decided that the chancel must stay and it was preserved. However, in future restorations, much of the timbers were stripped out and destroyed. It's here on the east side of the churchyard where we find many yew trees and all believed to be ancient. Indeed, the first mention of them is in the church records dated to 1663. It's worth noting that in the year of 1846 a badly carried out attempt was made to try and restore St Peter's Church to what was believed to be a possible Norman character. This was a total disaster and the results were to say the least horrendous. 
the wooden piers in the nave were replaced with stone cylindrical ones and with the addition of fancy carved capitals it looked absolutely ridiculous. The tower that we see here today was remodelled in the early 1700s, however the three original bells were saved and they still hang here to this day. The bells each carry an inscription and read as follows. Bell 1, 1627, Jesus be our speed. Bell 2 carries the initials S, A, D, T, H, A, P, N, D and D, H. Bell 3, dated to 1689, states William Sharman and William Axon, Wardens. It's here in the churchyard that we find the grave of Robert Blinko, Rector of Swettenham. Originally mounted on his grave was a sundial cast in the year 1761 by William Wrench of Chester. However, today it stands cast aside next to his grave. I find it amazing that a piece of bronze such as this sundial that stood here for over 250 years remains here today for visitors to see for themselves. As with all episodes of History Walks, our visit wouldn't be complete without taking you inside the church to see the architecture and the treasures for yourself. However, we won't be using this doorway behind us, bricked up many years ago. The church here at Swettenham is a real mix of architectural styles dating back from the 13th century and right through to the renovations of 1846. As mentioned previously, there's evidence of much earlier Christian activity here at St Peter's and the evidence comes in the form of this wonderful Saxon sandstone cross found during rebuilding work on the South Isle in 1846 and now placed here in an alcove above the west entrance to the Tipping Chapel. and this beautiful stone carved 18th century font and what an example. You can see that the bowl is fluted resting on a main shaft that has clearly been turned. At the base of the shaft we find carved studs and the whole of this being mounted onto a circular stone base. As we look to the east we can see the altar. If we walk through the nave Added around 1500 AD, we approach the altar rails. Placed around three sides in the early 18th century, these rails have certainly stood the test of time. The altar that we see today was constructed around about 1897. However, it replaced an altar that dated right back to Elizabethan times.
Now this part of the building, known as the sanctuary, is the oldest part, excluding the side chapels. It's here where the original church would have stood way back in the year of 1260 AD. As you can clearly see, the building was of crook construction and the east wall still shows the crook. Now it's these tremendous oak piers that are supporting the weight of the roof and believe me, what a weight. That roof is solid stone. It's here at St Peter's where we find the Tipping Chapel. This is where Thomas Tipping and his family are buried in the family vault. Now Thomas Tipping and his family lived at nearby Davenport Hall and in 1848 the South Isle was reconstructed in memory of Thomas Tipping. It's here at St Peter's where we come across the pulpit, consisting of raised panels on a stone bed. The raised panels are thought to be installed in 1722 during the period of Queen Anne, however the stone base is more likely pre-Reformation. Now directly above my head in the tower you'll find the church clock originally built and installed in 1869. The clock was stripped down and rebuilt again in 1949 and I'm sure you'll agree they made a grand job. This clock has to be hand wound and this particular model only strikes on the hour. Now above the clock reside three bells on a separate floor. However, the only way to access the bells is by ascending the ladder. I mentioned earlier that three bells hang high in the tower and this is true. However, it's believed that there was once a fourth bell but this was given to nearby Goosery Church as payment of an outstanding debt between the two churches. It's here in the nave that we find two flags hanging from high above. The first flag of the regimental colours of the 4th Battalion 22nd Cheshire Regiment whilst the other flag is that of the 2nd Royal Cheshire Militia, carried by the regiment up to and including the year of 1892. It's safe to say that these flags have certainly seen better days, but they go to represent history. They tell us about the armed forces of Cheshire and the sacrifices that they made during the 19th and 20th centuries. Now one interesting and wonderful treasure that's still here at St Peter's to this day is that of an old fiddle in a case and hung on the wall of the North Isle. Once played by Charles Newton until 1811, it remains on the wall for people to see today. As with many churches, Parish records were kept and the registers started here in 1547 recording the history of the church. These today can be found at the County Records Office in Chester.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed taking a look around inside St. Peter's Church here at Swettenham. However, before we go, there's just one more thing that I really need to show you. Just take a look at this. Here above the north door we find a very interesting crest indeed. It consists of the head of an ass mounted on a ducal coronet. Well this is the crest of the Mannering family and it's derived from an event in ancient history. Well the story goes that a lord of the Mannering family was on duty at the Battle of Ascalon during the First Crusade. He twice had his horse shot from under him, and with no more horses available on the battlefield, he managed to capture a wild ass and make good his escape. As he made good his escape, he was heard to cry out, Devant les jeux pourris. This was to become the family motto of the Mannerings. Well, that's one story that really fires the imagination and just how true it is we may never know. I'd like to take this opportunity today to thank the Reverend Ian Arch for giving permission once again to film at one of his churches. Join me again soon as we take yet another history walk into the past. may know this is my 600th episode for TV presenter for history and I hope you've enjoyed every minute of the film. Thank you to everyone who's subscribed and watches my films regularly and I promise you I'll be bringing you many more films in the future. My name's James Barn, TV presenter for history, bringing history to life. Music